Hi everyone. So I've had lots of requests from people asking how I colour in my characters to make it look like they've got fur. So I thought I'd just do a quick demo just to show you the method that I use. It's quick and it's easy. I'm not an expert colourist but it works for me and I hope that you can take something from the video. So um, I'm going to use a stamp from our new retail therapy set and I'm, I've picked this this little character here and because we're going to do no line colouring I've chosen to use this is my go-to at the moment which is the ultra new morning frost ink pad which is the lightest of one of their sets of four dye based inks you could also use any other dye based ink as long as it's pale um, you could also use something like this which is the ink on three fade out ink um, you could even use one of your distress inks in a pale colour because as you colour it in, the, the line will actually fade away. So it's not the easiest to see, but I've stamped it there in, in the pale ink. So first of all, I have got here some water, a paintbrush with quite a fine tip. This one's actually an alter new uh, brush but any brush will do as long as it's got a nice detailed tip and then I've got some distress markers you could also use just distress ink pads and you can just smush them onto either a tile or a glass mat or, or something like that so I'm going to use today antique linen so I'm just going to scribble some of that on there I'm also going to use vintage photo so pop some of that on I'm going to use a small amount of worn lipstick. So just a small amount of that. And I may also choose some other colours as we go along. So I'm going to start just by dampening my brush, but with a piece of kitchen towel, just take off the excess moisture because you don't want it too wet. You don't want to drown the card. You just want enough water just to move the colour around. And I'm going to start on the edges and then pull the colour back in. And I'm not putting any texture in at this point. I'm just literally putting a base colour down. So you don't need an awful lot, you just need to work your way around just so that you've got a base colour. And obviously you can pick whichever colours you want, but start with the lightest one for your base. So I'm just filling in the whole area. It doesn't matter if it's not even, as long as you've got a base and you can keep going into your water, but keep using your kitchen towel just to take the excess off. So let's just fill in all these areas. As I say, don't worry about being too accurate at this point. It's just really just to get the, the basic coverage. So I'm just gonna turn the, turn the card. Now what's really important with this technique and um, with watercolouring in general is that you let that dry before you go in with your next your next layer. Now I'm going to struggle a little bit today because I'm I want to show you um, quite quickly. I don't want to take hours to colour the image so um, it may well be that, that I'll find that this bleeds a little bit but I'll do my best to try and show you. So now I've just gone in with the vintage photo so just slightly darker and I'm just letting the point of the brush just do the work for me and create those little fur type strokes and I'm just literally going around the edge and then what you can do is as you've got less and less paint on your brush sorry paint ink on your brush you can just pull it back in so that there's a sort of graduated effect now don't worry too much about the accuracy at this point because you can go in lots of times just to to um you know get it how you want it so for the moment it's all about layers so we're just popping a layer of the darker color around the outside and as i say you can pull it in if you want to at this point just to make it a slightly more even blend so You'll notice that I'm turning the card as I'm doing it because I want the the point of the brush to be in the right direction for the fur standing away from the the bear's head. So I'm just it's easier to, to move the card than to try and be moving your hand around as you're doing it. So I'm just going all the way around here. 
when you think the colour's not moving quite as well, then obviously pop your water on again, dampen it down and then go back in. And as I say, I'm just, just going in a little bit just to fade that so it doesn't look too out of place having the bold colour around the outside. So, and then I'm just using the brush. Again, I'm letting the brush do the work. I'm letting it create this sort of stippled, almost a stippled effect. Okay, and then, so I've gone all the way around the, the bear's head at this point, and I'm just pulling it in slightly just to make sure that there's some colour the inside as well. As you can see, I'm just stippling it. I'm not smoothing it out. And don't worry if there's any kind of bits where you think, oh, that bit's a bit dark or that bit's not dark enough or, or anything like that. You can come back to it as many times as you want um, and define it more or whatever. So for this, because I want that to dry before I go in again, I'm going to go to another part of the, the bear with the darker colour. So I'm just going to move on to a bit that's not touching the bit that I've already done because you don't want it to bleed. So I'm just going to move around to, to his hand, which would be dark where it comes over the bag there and then perhaps dark around, around the edge. So I'm just going around this way and then just bringing that in slightly. And then what I'm going to do is I've just taken that off. I'm just going to go in with the antique linen just to fill in that kind of gap because I don't want it to be too dark. That would be where the light is kind of hitting. I'm imagining that the light's kind of coming from the front and, and down like this. So then we're going to go in again with the darker colour and I'm just going to do the same on this hand or paw. And you can obviously take your time and make sure that you're doing a really kind of good job at, at getting an even coverage and you know really um that you you like the way it's it's kind of coming on i'm going a bit quick just to just to try and show you and then i'm going to take some more and go in around the ears so the bit that i think will be darkest was at the bottom there so i'm just going in with that first and then a bit lighter as you go to the, to the top of the ear like that and then perhaps a little bit darker as it meets the, the head there. And I'm just going to take off a bit of the colour. I'm going to go in with the antique linen and just kind of pull that out a little bit so it's a bit more even. And then I'm going to do the same. Now, the effect that I'm getting here now, it's not the perfect, it's not how I want it to look. It's just layers. So you can build up as many of these layers as you want. You could leave it like this if you want, you know, if, if that's the look that you like. Or you can go in and keep adding more and more layers. So I'm going back in with the antique linen. And just adding those in. I'm also going to just go back in with the antique linen on his face. And just, obviously before I just did a smooth layer, I'm now using the antique linen just to to add a little bit of texture to the centre there where, where the light would be hitting, so the, the lightest part. I'm going to do the same on his paw there. So it's just really about blending it so that you're happy with the balance of colour. Um, and what you can then do, so his face is, is dry now, so I'm just going to go back in with the vintage photo and just pop some more definition around the outside and just bring it in further. So just making sure that it's all kind of blended and you haven't got any bits that stick out as too dark or too light. And it's just really personal preference. It's just about, well, how do you want it to look? Are you happy with that look? Do you want to add some more colour? Do you want to... Um, 
do you want to oh, excuse that printer uh, let's add that in there so if I lift that up you can see that it's just added there's a little part here that's that's just a little bit flat not enough texture so I'm just going to go in and just literally stipple so I'm just touching the brush really lightly on those areas and I'm going to do the same again near the bottom here because it's just a little bit a little bit too flat there so I'm also going to do it around his ear all I would say is just make sure that it's dry before you go in because if if for example his ear was wet and I went in with another color you wouldn't get the texture in the same way it would just kind of bleed out and it would just be a flat color which may be what you want um, but when I'm trying to do fur I want it to look like it's got some depth to it so I'm just gonna go around here I'm actually going to put some more color on my on my tile here and just add in a bit of extra. Now, if you find that you've gone too, too dark and you're just not getting the contrast in color, you can always go in with another darker color if you want to, just to add um, that sort of difference. And I'm just gonna make sure that that's dark enough around there. The other thing I'm gonna do at this point, I'll just go back in around his, his hand there. Just make sure that's textured enough. Just add a bit of extra shadow inside his ears. And then, yeah, what I'm going to do now is just take a bit of the worn lipstick colour, make it a little bit, a little bit watery. I don't want it to be really bright. So I've watered it down there and I'm just going to pop that on his cheeks and I'm just going to use my tissue or kitchen roll just to kind of take away the extra the excess moisture there so I'm I'm happy with that fur I'm just going to take it out to show you I'm happy with the texture of that fur I do some more work if I if I was um not videoing this I would go in a few more times probably just to add a bit of extra uh, texture to the bear add a bit more range of color you can obviously do that at home you can take as long as you want like I say just make sure that you're um, dry letting it dry in between each layer I'm also just going to pop a bit of this this is ground espresso just gonna pop a little bit of that because it's a bit darker make sure I've taken off the excess water slightly darker so what I'm going to do is use that just to just what would be inside his ear here and here and if you think to yourself oh actually that's that's just a little bit too dark just go in with your water again tap away with your with your uh, kitchen roll and just take out that color and I'm just going in again where I've spotted a bit of a gap and just adding the vintage photo again. I'm also just going to go back in with a little bit of extra pink onto his cheek there. Okay, so for a quick demo, I'm relatively happy with that. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. I'm what I would now do is wait for that to dry and just go in with a micron pen, something like this, like mine's a 005 that I've got here. And you can actually see, I don't know if I can let you see this, but you can actually see the eyes, where the eyes and the, the nose and everything is. I'm not going to try and do that while I'm filming because my head would be right in front of the camera. So I'll do that afterwards. I'm just going to show you what I do for the bag. So for the bag, I'm going to use pumice stone. I want it to almost be a white bag. So all I'm doing is using the pumice stone just to kind of take the edges away and just 
and add a little bit of shadow. So I'm just taking a small amount of ink. I'm just going over the lines and where it will be darker. So kind of in that, in that patch at the bottom there. If it's easier, then obviously turn your image um, where you think it would be darker. So I'm just going to kind of go into that corner a little bit and I think it will be darker where it meets. Now, just be careful when you get to the bit where it meets the bear because it will bleed if you're not careful. So you just need to really um, take your time. Make sure it's as dry as possible first. But obviously with distress inks, if you, and with most watercolours, if you go back in with water after, it will re um re kind of work the the ink that you've already put down so you just need to be really careful when you get to the bits that meet like that um so i'm just gonna go i'm not gonna leave it like this this is just me kind of covering each of the lines and then i'm gonna go in with some water you see and just blend it out. I don't want it to be a grey bag as such, I just want it to um, be as pale as possible. So you can water down the colour if you want to and just, just drag it out. It doesn't need to be perfect. The good thing about watercolour is it is really forgiving and you can just work it as much as you want and if you think it's too dark then by all means go in with the water and your kitchen roll and just take a bit of the colour away. Um, I'm just going to go back in with some water here and really pale. So if you water down the grey, if you if you want to sort of blend it a little bit, I'm just literally going over the top. I'm not being careful here. I'm just literally wanting the grey to create a shadow. So it's not perfect, but you can get the gist of, of what I am trying to do here. And as I say, when you're at home, you can kind of take your time and just make it exactly how you want to make it. So I'm just gonna leave that like that for the moment. And I want to add some dots to my bag. Now I want to use salvage patina and as you may or may not know that they don't do that in the distress marker at the moment. So all I'm gonna do is just smush a little bit onto my mat and then I'm going to pick it up with the paintbrush. And I'm just gonna do some little dots. Doesn't need to be accurate. I'm quite happy just with a kind of quite relaxed look with this. It, I just think the more random it is, the better really. So um, so you know, just be as random as you want to be. And I'm going to do just a few at the side here. Okay, so there you go. And the reason I've done that is because the background that I'm going to pop this card onto, I'm going to use the salvage patina. So I just wanted to use the same colour. That's what I find with colouring the images, using those colours then on your background it makes it a lot easier and obviously because in the distress range I think this is why I've become so reliant on using my distress markers for colouring like this is because then I know that I've got exactly the same colours of um, ink pads maybe even the paints different things like that so I can create a background that I know is going to work really well with my image so I'm going to stop the video there I know that you can't see the finished effect because I need to pop the um, the eyes and nose and everything in but I'm just going to do that like I say with a black micron pen if you need to and you can't quite see the eyes properly obviously you've got the um the guide that you can use um from the acetate on the stamp set so you can kind of pop it next to what you're doing and just mark out and if you're not confident do it in pencil first and then go over it with your black micron pen and of course the key thing that I always try and do with my images is to add some white into their eyes a little bit on their nose is a bit of a reflection and one thing that I didn't forget um, I did forget to do which I will do as well is just 
go over the handle there which I'll do in a pen rather than try and paint it because it's a fine line so I'll finish that off and then I'll pop the finished card up as well so thanks for watching I hope that's um, giving you some inspiration thank you